Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome back to the Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour Finals and this is day three of the semi-finals. So, of course, we have the same pairings. Daniel Dubov gonna play against Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen against Ding Liren. And actually, I would like to show you the most exciting game of this round uh, where Magnus Carlsen gonna play as black and Ding Liren gonna play as white. What just happened in the first game? It was a draw. Then Magnus Carlsen won as white in the Sicilian defense. For some reason, uh, Ding Liren went for Sicilian. He he doesn't play it often, he doesn't have much experience, but of course these guys can play everything. Uh, however, Magnus Carlsen managed to win and here Ding Liren gonna play as white and he has to win because this is his last chance to equalize the score. Uh, just reminder, in the first match um, Ding Liren won, then Magnus Carlsen won, this is the match number three. And if Ding Liren, you know, want to win this match, uh, then in the game number three, he should actually win. Uh, otherwise, if it's a draw, then of course uh, he has to win as black, which is definitely more challenging. So uh, without further ado, let's see what just happened on the board. This is the, the most exciting game of the round. All the scores and the standings, I will um, show you the table at the end and I will explain what just happened during the round. We have Knight F3. Zucker Tort um, opening and now C5. And for some reason, the name for this opening is actually Sicilian Invitation. And how do you think why it's Sicilian Invitation? Because white can play E4. And this is exactly what uh, Ding Liren played. Uh, we have D6, so pretty standard. D4, C takes on D4, Knight takes on D4, Knight takes on F6, Knight C6 and A6. Nydorf variation of the Sicilian defense. We have bishop e3, English attack by Ding Liren, and now um, Ding in the second game played e5, however Magnus goes for the Scheveningen system and plays e6. We have f3, uh, the strongest move, and this, this is the, the main line, and now Magnus goes for b5. b5 with the simple idea, you know, attacking b4. Uh, this knight would have to move somewhere, uh, and this knight is a very important knight because it actually controls d5. And black want to play d5, as in most of the Sicilian defense games, uh, playing d5 is, a, you know, part of the plan. We have a3 preventing uh, black from playing b4 and now bishop b7 developing move and g4 starting the attack on the king side and asking Magnus what are you gonna do? Are you gonna castle on the king side? It looks like you know pretty dangerous for you and staying in the center it also can be very risky. Uh, for now Magnus Carlsen play h6 so preventing any g5 moves and kicking the knight and this knight is pretty important because it also support the, the d5 move in the future. Uh, but keep in mind but that both of the pawns can become the weaknesses. They are already weaknesses. So g5 is one of the plans, of course, for white after h4, g5. It can be quite dangerous. The same here for, for black. Um, this move always have to be kept in mind. And also if white castle on the queen side, which is the main idea here, uh, then black always, you know, have some ideas of sacrificing on a3 and get the very strong attack here. So uh, both sides have to be very careful and this is why, you know, um, this opening is uh, considered as the very, very sharp. We have queen d2 um, by Ding Liren, so he prepares the, the queen side castle and also uh, keep this butter on h6. So if black decide to actually castle, that can be, you know, very, very dangerous. Knight b to d7. And now I would like to just tell you that Garry Kasparov uh, in this game, which I mentioned before, he was the commentator. If you haven't seen that, um, that's, that was pretty interesting. Uh, he said that combining knight b to d seven with queen c7 is a very dangerous idea always in the in this kind of systems uh, in the Shevening and especially because the knight can actually be a sacrifice on b5 with the tempo on the queen and then can take potentially also another pawn and king in the center gonna be in the trouble so black always have to be very very careful here so better to play you know knight c6 or if knight b to d7 then rook c8 is the better idea and this is what happened in the board we have you know top class 
plus players, number one and number three in the world. So we have castle on the queen side and now a rook to c8. And here Ding Liren plays king to b1, moving the, the king from the semi-open file. Uh, and finally Magnus plays his dream move, uh, and dream move of every Sicilian player, d5. And now uh, some exchanges, so we have e takes on d5, knight takes on d5, knight takes on d5, and now bishop takes on d5. So this bishop has a pretty nice outpost. And also uh, watching at h1, x-raying, so if white want to play f4, which is the main idea, you know, attacking f4, f5, uh, then first rook g1 has to be played. Uh, and this is what Ding Liren played this part of the theory move number 15 and now believe me or not um, however knight e5 is the main move it looks pretty strong so it's pretty logical the knight can you know potentially jump to c4 can you know uh, watching together with the bishop on f3 uh, but it's the most drawish line ever because all the games actually in the database on the top level uh, grandmasters international masters level ended in a draw in the pretty ugly fashion uh, because after f4 knight f3 uh, th this is just you know exchanging everything knight f3 bishop f3 and after bishop e2 exchanging the queens then exchanging the the, the bishops and then finally exchange also another bishops uh, and th this way of playing chess you know it's a pretty ugly however we have Magnus Carlsen and um, Ding Liren so we want them to make some show and they delivered so bishop c5 by Magnus Carlsen we have f4 as planned now this move has a little bit of drawbacks yes it controls e5 uh, however it doesn't control anymore e4 so uh, potentially this knight cannot come to to e5 but can come to f6 and this is what Magnus Carlsen played uh, and now it's actually invitation for for g5 however it's not so attractive move because after g5 h takes on g5 f takes on g5 this knight can jump to very active e4 square uh, attacking the queen also the rook gets you know full mobility uh, and king has a quite nice shelter in the center so it's quite safe and now uh, these pieces also, you know, getting attack um, on the queen side. So uh, it looks, you know, quite good for, for black. So this is why definitely pushing g5 too early is a, is a very bad idea. Uh, this is why we have bishop d3 by Ding Liren now controlling e4 and saying, okay, Magnus, if you want to jump with the knight, maybe I'm gonna, you know, sacrifice my pair of bishops and uh, gonna exchange for your powerful knight on e4. Uh, so Magnus found another plan. He wants to bring the queen to the b file and then push the pawn, push the pawn and, and attack this, this weakness on a3. So that's the idea. Uh, but instead of queen b6, he played queen c7. Uh, why he didn't go for queen b6? It's faster, so it's pretty logical. However, white would play something like b4. And now black are in trouble. They, for example, if they take the, the knight, the problem is bishop d4 uh, and the queen has to be moved. If the queen takes the, the bishop, then of course the queen is lost. So that's not the best idea. Uh, moving the bishop back, bishop d6, knight e6 with the attack on the queen, that's another problem, uh, losing another pawn and the king gonna be completely exposed, so that's also a bad idea, bishop e7, now uh, e6 is actually controlled, but knight f5, knight f5 still attacking the queen and attacking g7, um, so after queen c6, Taking g7 is possible, but even knight e7 is very strong. And after king e7, bishop c5 and the king has to stay in the center. Uh, so then f5 is coming, the rook is coming, and you know, attack on the on the king in the center gonna be, uh, you know, just overwhelming. So the only move actually is bishop f8, defending g7, but look at this position, it's completely passive, so definitely uh, not the best choice uh, for Magnus Carlsen. This is why he didn't go for queen b6, but rather queen c7 and then he gonna um, play, you know, to the b file um, in the next move. Uh, or maybe in another's, because after queen e1 he's in troubles. He cannot go, for example, for, for queen b8, because 
this position is extremely rich in tactics. Knight f5 is the is one of the ideas here. Of course, uh, the knight cannot be taken because that's gonna be check and this is gonna be, you know, crushing. So white would win pretty easily. Uh, if king f8, then uh, again, bishop c5 and after rook c5, uh, queen before the queen gonna be uh, actually pinned and that's a lot of troubles for for black so that that's also not the best idea uh, castle is is even worse because now g5 uh, h takes on g5 um, and now this knight can be sacrificed on on g7 or on h6 doesn't really matter and after king h8 F takes on g5 now queen h4 is coming and uh, okay g takes on h6 queen h4 the knight can come uh for example to defend the the, the pawn however g6 is just you know winning move and uh, all the position gonna gonna just collapse so the position is extremely dangerous and Magnus Carlsen have to be very, very precise. Uh, he should play something like Bishop e7, uh, bringing another piece on this uh, on this file and, uh, and after, let's say, h4, then play Knight e4. Uh, and it's slightly better for white, but you know, it's still very playable. However, Magnus went for Knight e4 immediately. And here actually Ding Liren again could play something like uh, bishop e4 and all this line is actually four so uh, pretty easy to calculate and uh, Ding Liren for some reason didn't go for that probably he thought that Magnus Carlsen gonna gonna draw after bishop e4 uh, there is move knight e6 sacrifice temporary sacrifice the, the knight and after f takes on e6 this bishop can take on c5 with the attack on the bishop so bishop c2 um, with the check uh, and after king c2 queen c5 with tempo king b1 rook c6 defending uh, but now queen e4 and um, there are some you know um, attacking chances for white of course black can castle and the game can continue however this is the the weakness and uh, probably magnus carlsen uh, could hold that so ding liren didn't uh, didn't go for for that he want to keep more pieces on the board and he i uh, continue with h4 which is uh, completely you know good move uh, but here magnus carlsen actually played a mistake really bad move um he should you know believe me or not but he should go for castle this is suggestion from the engine uh, and he should castle and it's not so easy actually to open the position of the king because if g5 then simply uh, h5 can be played by black and if f5 then black simply can can wait um, and after attacking on e6 uh, black gonna control the the open file so uh, it's also not not so bad for 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 black so Magnus Carlsen should go for castle however he played queen b7 uh, both of the players are very low on time so now it's you know uh, the game is not really precise but Ding Liren uh, missed his opportunity and he didn't go for knight b3 very strong move attacking the bishop bishop has to decide what to do uh, if the bishop exchange the, the the bishops then then of course queen e3 and after uh, castle f5 and black doesn't have much you know counterplay this knight actually is a pretty strong piece controlling a5 and defending the position so white gonna get the the time for you know attack on the king side uh so that was his chance also if bishop a3 that would be pretty brave however that would not work because white can simply take the bishop and after knight c3 uh king b2 uh white can have you know the rook for two pieces so um definitely better for white if b4 then uh, a takes on b4 queen b4 this pawn can march but it can be uh you know refuted pretty easily rook a1 controlling the the a5 and everything is fine with the position if black would try for example move the rook then this knight is actually hanging so um also uh, that's that that was chance for uh, ding liren how However, low on time and now he make the mistake and he played c3 and c3 it looks like very very solid move but there is one serious problem the tactic bishop a3 by magnus carlsen the strongest move in the position and now magnus carlsen start to get initiative 
and Ding Liren is in troubles. Uh, he should go for the for for this bishop, but it looks very bad. Okay, bishop a3, and after knight c3, uh, king a1, knight d1, queen d1, and rook c3. This pawn gonna be a target. Uh, it can be defended, but position of white gonna be uh, pretty passive. Bishop c1, queen e7. Now again attacking, so knight also has to go to defense. And uh, and yeah, after castle, black can continue the attack and. Uh, it's gonna be, you know, very, very difficult for Ding Liren, but it's still, you know, um, the best idea for, for white to play. Maybe the bishop can come to this diagonal, maybe the attack can be continued. Uh, Th that's according to the engine the best the best option. Ding Liren went for f5. So he said, okay, you attacking on the on the queen side, I'm gonna continue the attack in the center and I'm gonna get your king in the center. Uh, we have b4, Ma Magnus Carlsen doesn't care about that. And now as this is pretty dangerous, okay, removing this um this defender, that would that would not even be possible to, to recapture because of the of the pin. So c4 by Ding Liren. Uh, and now, again, Magnus Carlsen sacrifice yet another piece. Look at this, knight c3, boom. And the funny thing is, but these pieces cannot be taken because now if b takes on c3, b takes on c3 comes with check and this is extremely dangerous uh, the only move actually saving not even saving the game knight b5 uh, slowing down the attack uh, the problem is black doesn't need to care about the material as well and can sacrifice the rook here and remove the defender of the of the knight and after bishop c4, bishop c4, the knight gonna fall as well. Uh, and let's say queen c3, uh, now queen b5 with check, and after king c2, uh, queen a4, and that's the problem. King cannot run, uh, because white gonna lose the queen, so that's not possible. And if king goes back to b1, then of course black gonna simply castle, and bring the rook to the game, and, and win that game. So... Uh, Interesting move, very strong move. This knight cannot be taken, the bishop also cannot be taken for the same reasons. And uh, this is why uh, Ding Liren goes for king a1. Actually, this is the strongest move in the position. Uh, and now we have bishop c4 by Magnus Carlsen and now f takes on e6. Ding Liren almost got the king in the center. However, now Magnus Carlsen said, this is time to castle, boom. And now my king is completely safe over there. Your king, uh, that's not the safety, but my king, you didn't start the attack, uh, my position yet. So, you know, I'm pretty safe here. Uh, we have bishop takes on c4, rook takes on c4. And now uh, if the bishop is taken, for example, after exchanging this bishop, the position is, you know, more clear. However, still, uh, the rook is under attack, it's, it, it can be taken, but also even stronger would be b takes on a3. Uh, and after, let's say, a takes on f7, rook f7, rook d2, and white can start to, you know, uh, try to defend, but it's gonna be very difficult. Black gonna just bring the rook to the, to the b file, and this attack gonna be um, just deadly. So, uh, Ding Liren try rook d2, avoiding the exchange. Uh, and now we have bishop b2, uh, king to b2. And here Magnus Carlsen uh, wasn't precise again. Uh, and uh, he could go for knight a4 with check. And after king b1, queen a4, king to a1. And after f takes on e6, black doesn't have any issues here. And, um, you know, this piece is gonna attack. The, the rook gonna join also the attack and... Uh, this this king doesn't have any protection just couple of pieces in the in the center very difficult magnus went for b3 so he want to push the 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 pawn and then the knight can jump and you know uh, and the pawn can continue the march uh so ding Liren first um, attack on f7 we have queen f7 and here uh, ding Liren, his last chance actually was to play rook f2 with the attack on the queen. So uh, knight a4 still on the table, uh, king b1, now queen g6 with check, but then white would have very beautiful knight f5. 
uh, with very interesting threat, you know, forking threat. So black would have to play something like king h7, but now we have queen f1 with the attack on the rook, with the battery also on f file. Uh, still pretty interesting. Ding Liren would be still in the game, however, uh, definitely in the very, very difficult game. These two pawns uh, are still uh, strongest assets of of uh, of black. However, uh, Ding has extra bishop for these two pawns, so you know he would be still in the game. Uh, however, Ding Liren decided to remove the pawn uh, on b3 which was pretty good shelter actually for him uh, because the rook for example cannot attack from the uh, from the back so uh, knight b3 was played and the problem is this is a blunder very serious blunder magnus carlsen played rook before and in this position ding liren resigned because he cannot defend the knight uh, if the queen goes to d1 then of course it's controlled by the knight Rook f2, this is too late because, of course, queen b3 and after king c1, that's gonna be a checkmate, it's not possible. Rook d8 is joining and, uh, and yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be actually a checkmate, no chances actually to escape. Uh, this is why after rook b4, Ding Liren resigned. So that was game number three and I would like to show you the standing. So here we go, Ding Liren. Uh, has one point, one match won, Magnus Carlsen already won two matches and to, uh, tomorrow Ding Liren has to actually win if he want to have a chances to advance to the finals. So uh, two and a half to half for uh, Magnus Carlsen. And in the second pairing, uh, Hikaru Nakamura said in the, in the interview that he played a very boring uh, openings and Daniel Dubov didn't have even the opportunity to show how strong tactician he is. Hikaru Nakamura is in the final, so uh, congratulations and, um, and yeah, that's all for today. And if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other games on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.